What is going on, everybody? It's Purple Haze here with another episode of Purple Shade. All right, y'all, you know I love talking about gaming and business and that intersection. And today we're talking about Game Pass and Call of Duty Black Ops 6. So it's no surprise that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is off to a wonderful start. A lot of the players who like the game are saying this is a great entry for the franchise, and I am excited about that. But is this going to be the success that it needs to be from a business standpoint? So we're going to dive down into that uh, here in a second. So just a little context. We already know that Xbox has made a lot of its business strategy around the Game Pass subscription service. And in order for Game Pass to be a success, it has to continually grow its subscriber base while also maintaining its subscriber base. That's what it has to do. What we've seen so far in the past is that some of the titles, particularly the ones from Bethesda, have not quite been able to do that. Not only that, but a lot of the third-party titles and other first-party titles from Xbox have also somewhat lagged behind in this area. Hence the reason why many would say Game Pass, including Xbox, would say that Game Pass is actually trailing their own expectations. That's okay, though. Because here's big time ABK to save the day. We know that Diablo 4 has potentially not only hit its own expectations, but surpassed it. Again, we won't know this for a few more months as we start to see who's actually went and subscribed to Game Pass because of Diablo versus those who just bought it versus those who are staying in the game. We won't know that for a while. And the same thing for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. We just won't know for a while. Again, I'm not really looking at sales just because we know putting a game like Call of Duty on Game Pass, there's many people who are going to dip for that cheaper option to play the game versus the people who are going to go for the more premium option of buying the game outright in the first place. So let's give a little bit more about like some pros and cons to this strategy. Some pros are that most of the subscribers who are going to be going into Call of Duty Black Ops 6 are already people in the Game Pass ecosystem. These are people who most likely already have an Xbox, signed up for Game Pass, and decided to leave Xbox or Game Pass just because they didn't find anything there. Or these are going to be some PC players who potentially don't want to pay the premium uh, of the $70 game and are going to get it for a much cheaper price with Game Pass PC. I also think there's probably some very tangential things on the cloud side of things. But again, I think that's going to be minimal. So I'm not really going to focus on that. What I do want to focus on are those subscribers who potentially already had Game Pass and now are re-upping. Do those subscribers actually stay around this time? And I think for the most part, because they're already familiar with Game Pass, that could be a positive. Additionally, there could be some subscribers who are just new to the ecosystem altogether. And also that's really ripe for a subscriber growth because these are people who probably did not understand the value of Game Pass and they may stick around. However, I also want to talk about some cons to this strategy. And that is, if we're saying that most of the subscriber growth is going to come from people who already have had a Game Pass subscription, potentially are already paying for Game Pass and are more likely to stay on. Well, a lot of these people have already left Game Pass before. And an indicator of future consumer behavior is a lot of times prior consumer behavior. And so if we're having consumers who have left before, there's a good chance that they'll leave again once they're done. What we also know is that traditionally, Call of Duty franchises, after about two and a half to three months, the player base drops off. Does this also bleed over to some of those new subscribers? Also, Call of Duty is actually launching into a very complex, a more competitive console environment. We have Valorant, we have X Defiant, and we have the finals all on console free to play titles that you don't need a subscription to actually play. There's actually a couple of other games I didn't mention that are also now free to play on console. So Call of Duty is actually a little bit more competitive or going up against some more competitive gameplay in the console environment. Do people say like, hey, I'm done with Call of Duty after two months. I don't want to pay for that subscription. Let me go to another a uh, game that's more free to play and also a game that's potentially, you know, adding content and having new seasons and just getting excitement over. We'll have to see. 
The last thing I'm going to say that's probably not necessarily going in Call of Duty's favor, but could be minimized, is the fact that next year is huge on the console side. Not only do we have Grand Theft Auto 6 launching, and we already know how big of a title that is, but we also have Nintendo Switch 2. Now, I know what you're saying. Hey, these are not the same category. You're right, they're not. However, many times console players own both a Switch and an Xbox. And in that case, you can almost guarantee that the hype that the Switch is going to be generating around February, March is going to outdo the hype that Call of Duty is generating around that same time. Most analysts are saying that Call of Duty is going to need to maintain new subscribers for six months for it to actually equal what the previous model was, which was buying the game premium and then buying add-ons and so forth. And so that six month period puts it right there towards the tail or towards the middle of when Nintendo Switch launches. So more to see. But let me know what you think. Are you enjoying the game? Do you think this is going to be a success? Do you think it's not going to be a success? What are you looking forward to playing? Do you even play first person shooters? Me personally, I think Call of Duty needs to hit a home run. Unfortunately, I think it's going to hit a double. So that means it's going to be a success, probably, but probably not the success it needs to be. But that's all I have to say. Look forward to hearing what y'all's thoughts are. But as you know, I don't care where you game, how you game, why you game, what you game on. As long as you're gaming, you're good with me. And as always, this is Purple Haze, and the proof is in the plane. All right, take care, y'all.